Here's a chart showing how much the 10 highest earning hedge fund managers made in 2020. Yeah, those figures are not millions, but billions. To put it into perspective, Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, arguably the most valuable company in the world, made 15 million in 2020, which is a tremendous amount of money, but when you compare it to someone like Israel Englander, well, it just looks minuscule. Honestly, you can hardly even see it. Hey everyone, my name is Kenji and in this video I want to explain what a hedge fund is and why on earth they make so much money. In short, a hedge fund is essentially a structure that lets you invest your own money as well as other people's money into any kind of investment that you want without really too much regulation. So let's get into the details. There's really five main parts that I want to cover. The first one has to do with the clients. Then we'll look at the fee structure, the investing strategies, the risk levels and lastly how the performance is actually measured. So who are the clients? There's really two main sides to this. On the one hand we, ha we have the general partner which is basically a person that actually manages the money and typically tends to put a portion of his own money in there as well. And then on the other side we have the limited partners which are all the different clients that bring in the majority of the money really for the fund. And typically limited partners might include pension funds, sovereign funds, endowments as well as some high net worth individuals and just to be clear these funds don't actually accept money from normal people like you and I and they have um, sort of a minimum requirement so essentially a minimum amount of money that you need to put in it's typically well above the million dollar mark and in addition to that they have a lockup period which essentially means that you can't take the money out for a set number of period usually something like five years so even if you need that money, they don't let you take it out. That's why it's mainly only open to sophisticated investors. So let's look at their fee structures. Typically two types of fees in a hedge fund. The first one has to do with management fees. And these are typically a fixed percentage on a yearly basis, say around the 2% mark. So that's 2% of the assets under management, which is basically the amount of money that the fund manages. The second type of fees has to do with performance fees, which are typically a percentage of the profits. So these are not guaranteed and they're not fixed. So essentially, if the fund does well and has a positive return, they'll typically take a 20% of that. So let's look at an example. Suppose this hedge fund manager manages a 100 million fund. Every year, he gets a management fee of 2%. So that's basically 2 million to pay for salaries, etc. Now the beauty of this here for him is that regardless of whether he wins or loses money, he gets a guaranteed 2 million. So essentially he guarantees that he'll be able to pay everyone and all of that stress is, is gone essentially. As for the performance fee, let's say he's up 30 million this year. Typically the performance fee is around 20%. So essentially he gets 6 million for that. That's basically the structure. But now imagine the fund is actually a 100 billion fund. Hedge funds of this size actually do exist by the way and now this management fee is not 2 million but rather 20 billion and if his fund was up 30% that's 30 billion and for him that would be 6 billion in performance fees so you can really start to see how they get so rich and how they enter the Forbes list for, his, for instance. But that said it's obviously not easy to raise funds of this size let alone actually perform with them. So a common term they use in finance is called the 2 plus 20 and by that they essentially mean this 2% management fees and 20% of profits. Alright, let's look into their investment strategies. So because there's so many types of hedge funds, we'll just focus on three of the most popular strategies and those are global macro, quantitative or quant as they might call it and event driven. So let's get into each. A global macro strategy bases its investment decisions on global economic and political trends instead of focusing on individual companies. That basically means that they take a top-down approach, they base their decisions on things like interest rates, economic models, currencies or politics. And their investment cycles typically medium to long term, where they might stay into something for even a couple of years. Among the most famous global macro hedge funds are Bridgewater, which is the largest hedge fund in the world, as well as uh, more capital. As for quantitative hedge fund, essentially a quant hedge fund doesn't rely on humans for their trades. Instead, they rely on algorithms that base their investment decisions. So essentially, they employ a, a big army of physicists, mathematicians and computer scientists to create an algorithm that will predict the investment opportunities and basically executes them automatically. 
Their focus is mainly short term, sometimes even less than a second to enter and exit a trade. And that's why they use computers for that. And nowadays, quant hedge funds are probably the most popular, especially given their really good returns compared to some other hedge funds. And among the most famous ones are Two Sigma and DSHO. DSHO was actually founded by a computer science professor at Columbia University, so that kind of explains the type of people that work there. And lastly, we have event-driven hedge funds, which basically target mispricings because of major events like an acquisition, an earnings call, or a bankruptcy, say. So their research mainly involves really getting into the financial statements of companies, reading all their public documents, and trying to get as much information as possible. An example of their strategy could be a healthcare company waiting to see if a new game-changing drug that they invented is going to get approved by the regulators. And depending on that, that's going to have a big impact on that company. And so they might, the hedge fund would take a positive or negative position depending on that and try to predict it. So these are typically short and medium term investments and among the most famous hedge funds are Davidson Kemper and DuPont Capital. So these investment strategies I mentioned are typically quite generic and sometimes they're a lot more narrow and specific like say one, one particular country or other times they might use hybrid models where it's a bit of quant say and a bit of global macro and they try to merge that together. Let's now look at risk and regulation. See with a normal fund like say a pension fund where you or I might put money in, they're actually very regulated. Essentially they're not allowed to use certain financial instruments. For example, they're not allowed to incur debt, sometimes they're limited to specific countries and various other things like that. Essentially, as a normal consumer, you don't want them to lose your money. So basically, they're very risk averse in that sense and they're highly regulated as such. As for a hedge fund, the risk levels are actually very different. It's a completely different story, mainly because they only deal with sophisticated investors and they're not regulated at all. And so they basically can do anything they want as long as they make money. That's really all that matters to them. And to illustrate just how far they're willing to go to make money, check this article out. It was written by Business Insider back in 2012 and it says that the hedge fund has physically taken control of a ship belonging to Argentina's navy. Now if you look into the details, it's because Argentina hasn't paid back a 2001 bond that they owe to them. That's actually 11 years ago we're talking about, since 2001. So yeah, they rocked up to Ghana and seized a military ship. Say for a pension fund, well, they probably won't be allowed to go all the way to Ghana to take a ship. And uh, secondly, they probably won't know what to do with it. I don't know what these guys did with it, but it's just to illustrate uh, the extents to which they're willing to go and they can't go because of the regulation. Lastly, there's performance. I'd say there's two main metrics for this, returns and diversification. For returns, they're typically measured against the benchmark. So for instance, it might be measured against the S&P 500. So anything above that is positive, anything below is negative. It's uh, that simple, really. Another big performance metric is diversification. So basically, because what they do is so different to your average investor, that basically means that they're not correlated to the market. So even though the market might be in a recession, the hedge funds might actually be doing well and making money. And that's something that's very attractive to investors. Obviously, the opposite also applies when the market's doing well, maybe they're not doing so well and that's not good. But overall, the, the investors like that mainly for diversification, really. So yeah, that's a summary of hedge funds. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. I'll leave uh, two books in the description if you're interested in some further reading on the topic and I'll catch you in the next one.